I get offended when somebody don't like my like, I was watching one of your beat club videos. You were saying you getting 50K, 100K for beats. No, I used to get like 300, 500. Producing ain't always just making music. It's about, it's about producing a great atmosphere for a person. This might be too much gems for y'all. Like, I'm, I'm always, see, now that I'm like in the world, I'm eight steps ahead. Saying now, once they give you the information, it's up to you, you to, 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 to do what you do. I didn't do it as much because the drugs had a little bit more toll. Right. But once I started breaking myself off, weaning myself off, divorce, then all the stuff started coming out in my divorce. Like, who was doing this by, you know, not say behind my back, but right. stuff I wasn't paying attention to. Right. Because I fought me. Because I couldn't pay. If be something different if I was paying attention. Right. I didn't like how the mentality came on from a drug abuse. Timberland. He's the guy who was able to turn his music into dollar bills. A whopping net worth of $85 million, Thanks to chart-topping hits with the likes of Missy Elliott. And Megan New and Missy, like three the hard way. Coming straight out of Virginia. Aaliyah. So get your act right up, else we won't be speaking, girl. And Justin Timberlake. You take my his innovation in beats and revolutionary production techniques have earned him the status of an icon in the music industry. Yet beneath all the shimmer and glitter, there lies a much darker question. How could such genius behind such classic tunes be the architect of his own downfall? What does it mean to be a man who would redefine pop culture, yet be swallowed whole by controversies one after the other? Let's dig up Timbaland's dark past. They called him a genius, a visionary, a revolutionary. But beyond platinum records and chart-topping hits lies a tale much darker. You can hide behind other things to mask the terrible. And uh, for me, I think I hid behind money, the fame. I always had confidence, but when I get by myself. For Timothy Zachary Mosley, it began in a small bedroom in Norfolk, Virginia. There, a young man disabled by a tragic accident found solace in the rhythm of life. While working at a restaurant, he was accidentally shot in the neck by a colleague, leaving him partially paralyzed for nine months. And get this, the young producer was only 17 years old. But Timbaland was able to turn his life around and become a music mogul, all because of his love for art and music. I got tired of like using my ASR-10, so I just started going to garbage cans and rakes, spoons and plates and shit, and saying to myself, how would I make music if I ain't had no money, if I ain't had no way to afford it? So the concept was, what if all in my keyboard and my sounds leave tomorrow, how would I make music? And I start realizing music is all around us. So I start taking like garbage cans, micing it up, finding out new ways of finding bottom and different type of shit. In fact, his relationship with Timberlake is particularly worth talking about. The two have been partners for years and have got a hella impressive discography to show for it. Like My Love. Welcome to my great place, Costa. I'm glad you came. Let's make a toaster. Uh -huh. Then Carry Out. Music speaks to the soul in funny ways. And it's like, what Cry Me A River is I could see, like, I watched him come in the studio. I just watched his body language. And I went in the booth and I just, and I knew that sound would move him in a different way. But not all that glitters is gold. Beneath that rags to riches tale is another story. The human being who has been hounded by the pressures of fame. That became cast in stone with the documentary Surviving R. Kelly, showcasing decades of sexual abuse allegations against the R&B singer. As the most horrific revelations tied to the case, R&B icon Aaliyah was actually found dead in the midst of all of this. It is also believed that the 27-year-old R. Kelly secretly married the 15-year-old Aaliyah, though it was later annulled. This shocking fact made the public anger against the singer grow strong. Worse yet, a reposted video from a 2011 episode of E! True Hollywood Story came back to haunt everyone with a really disturbing confession from music producer Timbaland. I want to give up a little secret. I was in love with her. I said, but I'm not. She's just a baby. I'm old. I said to myself, I'm just going to be her brother. Oh, man, I was fighting. I was fighting a lot, a big war. But I loved Leah. Timbaland was 23 at this time, so his admission was rather disturbing. Although he said that he had never done anything to act on his feelings, the revelation still brought to light very serious questions about how young, vulnerable artists within the industry are treated. 
That said, despite the loss, Timbaland learned to carry on, and for a while, he was worshipped in the industry. It wasn't until a video surfaced of him making startling comments about Britney Spears that Timbaland's otherwise carefully cultivated image as some kind of a musical visionary really started to unravel. Speaking with fellow producer Ninth Wonder, he was asked about Britney's memoir, where she spilled the beans about her tumultuous relationship with Justin Timberlake. Rather than saying something thoughtful, Crying Me a River is making headlines again uh, because of Britney's memoir. She's saying yeah, that she's all crazy, right? <laughs> I want to call her JT, but you got to put a buzz on that girl. <laughs> as expected, the backlash was severe. Social media blew up with protests as fans called out Timbaland for hating women and being out of touch. And so it didn't take Timbaland long to backtrack on his statements. Man needed to keep his career alive. I apologize to the Britney fans and her. And uh, yes, you know about respecting women. Hell yeah. Beyond the immediate outrage, though, lay the fact that the run-in had provided a preview of the even worse relationship between Timbaland and Britney Spears. They parted on bad terms, with Timbaland feeling bitter that Britney was being worked with by other producers. This paints a picture of one man fighting for peace of mind while staying in the music industry's intricacies. With the scandal breaking out, it had now become vividly clear that everything Timbaland had said in the past about other women, especially Aaliyah, was now under scrutiny. In the blinking of an eye, the once celebrated workhorse was in the crossfire of flames. Any remaining glittery facade of success started wearing thin amidst charges of plagiarism against Timbaland in 2007. It all started with the singer-songwriter Nelly Furtado accusing Timbaland of borrowing elements for their hit single, Do It. Without giving the originator his due credit and reward. Again, Timbaland made headlines when he was sued by another party over copyright infringement of the track, Throw It On Me. The case was settled, though out of court, where the settlement terms were not disclosed to the media. In another claim made against him, a sample was discovered uncredited on Aaliyah's album, which was entirely produced by Timbaland. But the reasons for the complaint did not end there. In an even more high-profile case internationally, Swiss musician Bruno Spoeri attested that Jay-Z's verses, made by Timbaland, bore many similarities with his own song, On The Way. Your last shit ain't better than my first shit. <laughs> Eventually, the Swiss courts decided that Jay-Z and Timbaland would have to pay Spoeri a share of the song's revenue. These plagiarism scandals hence marred what was a flawless career through Timbaland. An individual who had been celebrated for the pioneering sound was now on the defensive over allegations that reportedly questioned his artistic integrity. In a way, his public perception changed and many doubts arose about him not being creative enough. Unfortunately for Timbaland, the worst was yet to come. In 2011, the producer became addicted to prescription painkillers after being prescribed Oxycontin and Percocet following a dental procedure. I was fighting the enemy within me. I was married at the time, doing things, you know, not really knowing who I am, chasing things that's false. And just life just got a little bit aggressive. It got, it got the best of me. Mm -hmm. And so to deal with all the pressures of life, it started with a dentist taking Vicodin. Then the Vicodin made me feel like Superman. It made me get over everything. And then all of a sudden, I, I find myself just taking it all the time. I had a doctor that was giving it to me at all the times. The addiction spiraled out of control as he went through a messy divorce and faced financial troubles with the IRS. The hitmaker told Men's Health magazine for the January-February 2020 issue, It'll make you function because everything feels great. Everything is just, it could be a bad moment going on, but you don't, the pill blocks all that out. And, it, and I thought that the pills was making me create, but as I went back and listened to some of my music, like, oh, this is not creation, this is a hot mess. We and it came at the cost of his health. Timbaland gained over 350 pounds and developed prediabetes. He looked nothing like his former self. But then his bubble popped. He had a dream that his death was near as he saw himself in a white face, and that's when Timbaland knew something had to change, at least for the sake of his three kids. 
my mom was a great prayer warrior. She was in the church and she told me she had a dream of me being like, uh, my face was turning blue or something mm -hmm. like that. And then out of body experience where I was laying in the bed and I saw myself laying in the bed. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, you know, God has changed my mind and um, I didn't go to a doctor. I didn't, I did a cold turkey here. I just started weaning myself off and you can put pills in front of my face. I could just look at it and be like, cause I ain't gonna say it and hold you. I'm like, it, oh, it, it feels great. It's amazing, mm -hmm. but it's not amazing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I try to be an advocate and talk about that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. And I put my mind to it with the help of God and praying. He weaned me off. I didn't have to go be on another drug right. to get off a drug. Right. Timbaland made a bold move in his recovery journey, swapping his 14,000 square foot Miami mansion for a 2,500 square foot condo downtown. That's commitment. This dedication has been key to his staying clean. I feel like when you're trying to be great at something, you can't half-ass something. And I feel like before, it wasn't productive for me. But until 2017, 2016, I made up my mind to really go forward with health and really give it all because I, don't, I didn't want to just lose weight. I really I might have a goal in mind. My goal is to uh, just to be ripped at least by the time I'm 50. You know what I'm saying? I want to be like, this is the new middle age look. However, not everyone stayed around and put up with Timbaland's antics. His wife, Monique Mosley, of five years, filed for divorce in 2023 and walked away. But not without asking Timbaland for $2 million up front and for him to foot the bill for her two kids, one of which was from a previous relationship. Speaking of kids, Timbaland has three kids, two sons, Demetrius and Frankie, from a previous relationship, and a daughter named Rain with Monique. That said, divorce seems like a small obstacle for someone who had his house broken into and made headlines as the authorities couldn't find them. Back in 2010, Timbaland's house got robbed and the authorities received a call. And it didn't have anything to do with the theft. Instead, according to Sheriff's Deputy Lieutenant Rich Erickson, deputies responded to a call initiated by distraught family members of Timothy Mosley, better known as Timbaland. Apparently, the family thought that the producer was so distraught over the theft that he might harm himself. Fortunately, nothing happened as a chopper spotted Timbaland in Point Doom at Heathercliff Road. He just went for a drive to deal with the theft. And so, Timbaland's stronger than most people think. In order to be great, you gotta take great responsibility. I'm an advocate of getting checked out, going, you know, just taking better care of yourself, especially as a minority, as, you know, as, a, as black people. Although his chart-topping days might be behind him, his influence in the music industry remains strong. He's now channeling his energy into mentoring the next generation of talent through his initiative, Beat Club, which helps up-and-coming producers gain industry insights. Beyond music, Timbaland's creativity extends to children's literature with his book, Nighttime Symphony. And on August 30th, 2023, he announced his first solo project in over a decade, the EP, Textbook Timbo. At 52 years old and with a net worth of 85 million, Timbaland shows no signs of slowing down. His journey is far from over.